Hey, it's uh, Cham from uh, Chaminda Technical Limited. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about my life as a, a Buddhist preacher. Uh, I was uh, a Buddhist from birth. So uh, how it happens in Sri Lanka, I was born in Sri Lanka. So how uh, we are brought up is we get the same religion as our parents. So my mom was a, a Buddhist, my father was a Buddhist. So I was a Buddhist by birth. Uh, even though I don't believe in that because from birth if you get a religion you don't really have the the luxury to be flexible and uh, I try to test other religions as well I'm not saying there is right or wrong one but uh, it's good to have the flexibility anyway so um, from from uh, my younger age I was uh, taught Buddhism at school so I had to learn about Buddhism I learned about Buddhist history uh, so that's how I was brought up. Uh, but I thought there was something more than the history, more than what we learn from the books. Because it's meant to give you happiness. And by reading those, it didn't make me happy. So, And uh, you're supposed to be uh, uh, able to become uh, uh, or achieve the ultimate happiness by becoming, uh, by comprehending Buddhism or comprehending Dhamma. So I was a little bit puzzled and so I was looking for this. I was reading stuff. I was reading a lot of materials, books. I was listening to uh, Buddhist sermons, Buddhist preachings. But I had a feeling that this is not what I was looking for or this is not what uh, the real uh, uh, truth is. Because I believed that I would be able to uh, uh, understand the real truth if I comprehended Buddhism. So when I was listening to these, and my mother was very interested in the same, so she was following uh, some uh, monks, she was reading books, she was listening to sermons, and she was sharing some of these stuff with me. And uh, I came to London in 2003, and then this uh, uh, kind of, uh, I wasn't really, uh, uh, I didn't have time uh, to really uh, do the research and look for this. So it was a kind of a, a pause at that time. But anyway, uh, the time went by. Like I said, I went through some tough time with my previous marriage. And um, I was going through a very tough time, a dark uh, uh, time. And uh, I wasn't very happy. So during this period, uh, I remember my mother sent me a clip saying, Oh, listen to this one. This is different. It's not the same. Uh, you, you might find what you're looking for in this. But I didn't listen to it for about a, a year or so. I remember that because she said, because she has been sending a lot. Since I was in London, since 2003, she was sending uh, one after another. So I was listening to some of them and I'm like, oh, it's the same old thing. So I didn't want to listen to another one. After about one year, when I was going through this dark patch of my life, I thought, oh, let me just listen to this and see what. Uh, all of a sudden, when I listened to it, I felt something totally different. I felt like, oh, my eyes are opening. I'm gonna, I'm seeing something that I never saw. I'm listening to something that I never listened to before. And this was a, a total a shift of my life. And I was uh, uh, pretty, uh, how shall I say, I was pretty amazed in what I listened to. And I realized at the time that this was real Buddhism. So I was like, I need to speak to this monk. I need to see this monk. I speak. I spoke to my mom and I arranged to go back to Sri Lanka to see this monk. And she said, oh, this monk is, uh, he doesn't speak to people like that. Any Anyone who comes in there, it's only once every week he has this sermon and about 2,000 people visit this sermon and that's it. I won't be able to speak to them, uh, the, the monk directly, but uh, I thought I'll give it a go. I uh, will try. So I took a lot of... Uh, I took about 15 kilograms of fruit and uh, I was pretty uh, excited to see the monk. Uh, it was uh, Waharaka Thero, Waharaka Abhyarathanarankara Thero. So this was the monk that I was referring to. So I went there to uh, Waharaka uh, temple and uh, amazingly, I was able to see the monk and speak to him individually, which was a rare case. I was uh, able to go to his uh, pla uh, place where he... Uh, was residing and uh, uh, give the, the fruits uh, that I brought from London as well as speak to uh, Thero. I, I explained what I realized, what I comprehended 
and he was like yes and i had a uh, i had a question and i asked the question as well and uh, then i listened to the the sermon uh, it went for about uh, uh, at least six to seven hours the whole day i was there and then i came back and i was listening i wanted to listen to more and more so i downloaded about 2500 plus uh, uh, audio clips there weren't any video at the time if i remember right so i uh, downloaded them into a, uh, a usb and then i brought back to london then i started listening to them over and over again so that was how i met uh, wahra and it was a very very uh, exciting journey i loved it um uh, the 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 good thing about this was this happened in uh, 2011 and uh, there were a lot of other uh, monks well they were actually uh, uh, british uh, and they were working here in london some of them were working in the uk uh, nimata patero he became a monk after listening to waharuk patero's sermons there's uh, amada sanatero who was a banker in london he was a british uh, passport holder as well he went to Sri Lanka he became a monk after listening to this Dhamma he was like oh what are we doing here this is what the real truth is this is what the real happiness is and he became a monk even uh, uh, Amada Sanatero's uh, uh, wife also became a monk at the time and uh, and uh, I have uh, listened to uh, sermons of Amada Sanatero as well as Nimata Patero, Nimata Patero. Uh, there was another monk, uh, Abir, uh, Walasmule Abir Tero, who was an engineer in Sri Lanka. He listened to Abir uh, uh, Lanka Tero's sermons and he became a monk too. There are so many of them who became monks after listening to the Dhamma, after comprehending the Dhamma. And I did follow these Teros as well because they listened to Waharaka Tero. They were associating Waharaka Tero very closely. So I wanted to learn from them because I was in London and uh, Amada Sanatero's sermons are in on YouTube in English and um, the others are in Sinhala, uh, Abhay Thero's. Abhay Thero's focusing more on meditation and I've been to a few uh, uh, meditation retreats. He came to London a couple of times. I've been to pretty much all of them. Uh, spent, uh, sometimes it was two weeks in a row. Sometimes it was nine days in a row meditating in a, a monastery or in a place where you have the uh, the ability to meditate really well we had a, a retreat in wales which went really well so i have been to all of these and that's when my preaching started what happened was uh, in one of these uh, 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 retreats i met lucas and uh, there were a few others who were only uh, speaking english uh, they didn't understand uh, uh, the the, the preachings really well so they wanted someone to speak with so that the uh, that person can translate uh, it into english because these were all pretty much uh, uh, most of them were held in sinhalese which is my uh, mother tongue which uh, is uh, mostly used in sri lanka so anyway then they asked me if i can do some uh, uh, discussions online because they were some of them were from different countries uh, they were european most of them but from different countries so I started this. They, uh, there was about four, five, six, seven, and then up to about 14 people who joined these sermons. And uh, it became uh, more and more interesting. I loved it because I had to learn before I could preach. So I learned it and I loved learning it. I comprehended more and more. Then I started a YouTube channel. I have about 3,390 following that channel. I still have the channel, but I don't do any preachings anymore, which maybe I can do from, you know, here and there once in a while. I'm not stopped uh, uh, preaching uh, 100%. I still do meditation pretty much at least three, four times uh, a week, which calms me down, which keeps me really uh, healthy and quiet. And uh, I feel really good after meditating. So that's something that I do. And uh, that's something that I enjoy. So that's how I started my uh, preaching a life or Buddhist becoming a Buddhist preacher uh, so it was all free it was done for free there was no money monetary uh, uh, involvement in there it was all done for free uh, the preaching if I was to explain to you what I was preaching is how to become happy so how the reason how you become happy is by getting rid of the sufferings so if you see what gives you suffering and get rid of all the sufferings that's how you become entirely ha happy or become ultimately happy so what gives you suffering is attachment so whenever you attached to something that gives you a suffering the only thing that gives is a suffering which 
at the time we don't understand we don't realize for example say you needed a car you you look at a car you love the car that's the model you want that's the make you want that's the color you want you're like oh, i need that car so that is when the attachment starts you are attaching with something now it comes three sufferings which are sankara dukkha 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 and viparinama dukkha so the sankara dukkha is when you want something you are trying to achieve it so you can't just you don't just get it you have to work for it so you uh, uh you uh, you have to waste your energy to get it so maybe you have to put money in maybe you have to work for it you have to talk about it you have to think about it so it's the three uh, that works are the brain and the, the the words and the 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 body has to be worked towards getting it so you have to suffer that's the suffering you have to work towards getting it but you don't feel the suffering because you are thinking your your objective is that oh if i get the car i'm going to be so happy so your focus is on the happiness so you forget everything else and your focus goes towards having the car so that the 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 struggle or the the suffering is uh uh not highlighted as such then once you get the car as soon as you get the car you didn't have a car before now you have a car so as soon as you get the car you have the dukkha dukkha which gives you a uh, a suffering when you have something now you have to protect it you can't lose it you are scared of losing it now it's a new suffering that you didn't have before when you didn't have a car you weren't worried when you heard a noise outside when a, a car alarm went off you weren't uh, bothered at all but now you're like oh is that my car so you're worried so that's a, the second suffering and the third suffering is uh, viparinama dukkha which happens when the, the the car doesn't stay the same as you bought it it depreciates it changes maybe dents come in then maybe the the paint fades off so things like that happen and you don't want it you don't like it and that gives you a suffering so these three sufferings come with anything that you attach with so that's why the more you attach the more you suffer the more you let it go but at the same time this letting go and the attachment happens in your mind not anywhere else you think oh it's an agreement it, it could be something else but no even if you write an agreement if you sign an agreement if you're not attached mentally you're not going to suffer but if you're attached mentally you will suffer so the, the detachment has to happen from your mind so just mentally detach mentally let it go and you won't suffer basically that's what the preaching is all about how to get rid of the suffering and that's the gist of what I was preaching it's a lot to it but uh, yeah i can't explain everything here now so um if you know about buddhism if you have heard about buddhism if you like buddhism if you want to learn about buddhism let me know i would love to hear from you also if you have any questions please feel free to ask comment on maybe if i said something wrong maybe let me know i'm so glad to hear from you and uh, yeah that's my uh, uh, life as a buddhist preacher i love doing it uh, would i do it yes i would do it maybe i might become a monk one day you never know let everything go and that's where the real happiness is but yeah um thank you very much for listening uh please let me know what you think thank you very much they don't sound